Hello, Few Candy here, and welcome back to another episode of A City Skylines. And we are back in Oridon. Last time out, we had a live stream where we developed this little student kind of nightlife area. A little bit of a campus extension with a couple more of the buildings in here. So we got in the laboratories, the auditorium, and the bookstore there. And yeah, put in this little kind of leisure nightlife area with a bit of mixed mixed commercial uses in as well so we've got this hotel over here and also a couple of blocks of residential that could be student student accommodation here alongside the main road which i think came together reasonably nicely and of course we do have the library nightclub as well uh, there were some great name suggestions on the stream so thanks to everyone who hung out because yeah it was a really fun one it was a really fun one I think this area is starting to come together quite nicely as a big commercial hub mixed in with some of those university buildings. Of course, we've got the Grand Library in there as well. Before today's episode, we are going to shift our attention back over to this area around the intersection here. Because when we look at demand, we do actually finally, after many, many episodes, have some industrial demand. So the plan for today is to start working on our ore industry. Really excitingly, because I love industrial builds, so I'm excited to get started on this. Now, unlike our oil industry, I am not expecting this ore industry to get to level five today. We're going to start off pretty small and then work on a train cargo hub over here. Now, this little band in between the highway and these block of residential here will be an industrial strip, essentially, up along that highway. So that's what we are going to start working on alongside the ore today. So the first thing we want to do for this build is have a little think about road network, because at the moment there are no road connections, no obvious road connections coming out into this direction. We're going to want to have a highway intersection pretty close as this will be essentially a main industrial build. So there will be a lot of truck traffic coming and going from it. So we definitely want easy access to this highway. Now, the fact that we're building it around this four stack interchange does cause some problems with that because I don't like to have intersections too close to one another. So we are going to start off by doing just a really small intersection further away like this and bringing the road up and round. So what we are going to build back here is actually a dumbbell interchange and we're going to sink it right down into the ground. So we're just going to start off by doing just a little bit of terraforming and of course bring that brush strength down whenever you do this because it always starts off exceptionally high <laughs> indeed. So I'm just going to bring the terrain down just a tiny bit and then we will level that out. So then what I will do is grab a four lane road and I do want one without parking here. Definitely don't want parking so we'll choose this one from the vanilla plus plus roads collection. Let's turn on Anarchy and let's draw this out. Now we're going to draw it out either side and I want it to be very, very even indeed. So we will do that. And then what I'm going to do is just add on an extra three units either end. Just like so. So that should all be equal. And now here we are going to have to adjust this and we are going to have to move it down a little bit. And that should be absolutely plenty there. So now we can come back into the terrain tools. Grab our levelling tool again and just level out these areas around the ends of these roads to that level there. So in order to get our little roundabouts in, I am going to just put in a slightly different road. And for now, we won't worry about the terrain too much, but we'll just bring it up straight like that so that we've got nice clear exit roads either side. And then what we'll do is use Roundabout Builder to build out some small-ish roundabouts in here. So yeah, I think that kind of dimension will be absolutely fine. And we'll do exactly the same on the other side as well. And of course, just so we can get our slip roads in, let's make sure that we brace that nicely. So now what I will do, I'm going to turn off snapping to nodes so that we can get this in a little bit closer, but we do want to snap to road guidelines. We're going to bring this in nice and closely and I'll just use a raised section for now, just like that. And then if we go back to the ground and turn snapping to nodes back on, let's bring out a nice connection for it and we'll turn off road bending here because then what we can do is just use move it with alt selected to snap it into place there. And that just gives us a bit of a smoother exit lane off this highway coming off here. 
And then from this point, what I want to do is bring out a two lane, two way piece of highway and curve it nicely in towards the highway. So we get a nice smooth connection here. So something along those lines will do. We'll actually just pull this back just a tiny bit. Let's continue that piece of road on and then we can join this up to the end of this road. And then from here, all we can simply do is bring out a, another slip which can join up to the highway like so. And it is a little bit close to this one, so it will be something that we'll need to keep our eye on. We have got two nodes in between, so they should be fine for changing lanes there. But yeah, we'll just keep our eye on it. We'll keep our eye on it. And then of course, I'm going to downgrade this piece of highway here. Uh, and I will actually remove this node because I don't think it's necessary to have that there. We've got a little bit more space in between. And here we can do a lot of tidying up with intercession marking tool and no controller, which I will come along and do later. And then here as well, we definitely, definitely want to tidy up this slope. So I'm just going to grab all of the nodes here and use move it just to slope that down nicely. So it's a little bit more gentle coming down onto there. And of course, again, we can use intersection marking tool here to make sure that everyone is sticking in their lanes and also a bit of traffic manager as well, just to make sure that they stick to those lanes there. And then what we want to do is repeat that same pattern on the other side. And so there we go. We have our dumbbell interchange set up and I have come through with no controller to widen out these nodes around the roundabouts and set them up with a traffic manager as well. And we will come through and detail this all up in the detailing time lapse later. But that is our intersection in for now. So what we do want to do here is then bring this road up and round towards the industry. And this land all up here is all very, very flat. So we shouldn't have any trouble with topographic requirements here. So I am just going to swoop this around and bring it in like so, because what we will want is it to feed into this cargo area here. Now with this road the other side, I don't actually want it coming out on this road, which is what the, where the cargo station is going to be situated, just further down this way. So I have just brought it at a slight curve out and round, which will run through the middle of this industrial area here. And then down this end, I don't want this crossing the railway road here. So this is the intercity train line, and I absolutely definitely do not want level crossings on that because it could end up really busy once we've got our downtown in there with our main train hub and that sort of thing. So I'm probably going to end up separating the cargo and the intercity lines as well at some point. But for now, we are going to lower this main train line all the way to the height that we have underneath this bridge here. So this road is going to go straight under this highway and it is going to come round to another junction, which will be situated round about here. But we will just leave that for the moment um, because we have got our one in here. So we'll come on to that in a later episode once we know exactly what infrastructure is going to be around there. But for now, we can just bring this in uh, at a plain and simple intersection here. And of course, let's give them dedicated turning lanes because it could potentially become quite busy on that piece of road there. OK, so now we're connected either end. Let's start off by thinking about our ore area here. And the one thing that we don't have on this map is a huge amount of ore. So a lot of it is in the ocean around the edges of the map here, just a few spatterings of it but nothing particularly in this area. So let's come in and use our resources mod to clear out all of this fertile land and we will add in ore instead. Now I'm going to paste it in pretty heavy around this area uh, just so we make sure we've got absolutely plenty of it and we're not suffering for any natural resources there. And it does have this really like lovely, it's kind of similar to the ruined texture actually. I mean, you can see the slight difference in it, but I love the color of this or texture. I think it, it looks great in here. And also when you've got all your rocks in and all of your detailing around your all industry assets, it just, yeah, it really adds to the overall effect. So I love that as part of this theme. Uh, I'm just gonna clear out these trees just from the middle here so we've got a clean space to work with. And of course, the next thing that we do want to do is come in and paint our industry area for this because we are going to use the industry DLCs or assets. But of course, like our oil area, I will be mixing in the base game or assets as well. Now, usually I like to put my ore mines as kind of cut into a hill or, or that type of thing. But because this map is pretty flat in nature there's some undulations but there's definitely no big hills 
we're going to have to do an ore pit. Similar to what we have done over here, these very, very small little ore mines or little ore quarries, of course, dodgy rocks, the abandoned quarry here. We're going to make it a similar type of vibe to those so that we're keeping on that Oridan theme and also making use of the landscape as it comes in this map. So let's go back into our terraforming tools. I'm just going to dial down the strength again, make sure that's down. And what we're going to do is start to dig out a pit. And so I think that gives us a good starting point and we will come through and tweak it as we start to put in assets as we go along. But for now, that will do. So let's just think about how we are going to set up our road network. So let's grab an industrial road and we will come out of this junction here. I think just straight like that. And then we'll bring it out at a slight angle and we can grab our all industry main building. And I think we will just put it up against the edge of the pit like so. Now this main building does change over time for all industry areas. It's the same. So as your ore industry or your oil industry or whatever it might be upgrades, this, the look of this building changes. So I'm not going to go into Bob and start changing it up right now because it will change as we level up. Now placing that has unlocked a few more assets. So we do have the ore grinding mill, which is our first processing building, but the main ones that we want are the extractors, which are the small ore mines is what we've got now. And we do also have some sand storage. Now placing the main building unlocks a few different more. Now placing the main building unlocks a few more assets. So we have the extractor for now, which is the small ore mine. We have the processing building, which is the ore grinding mill, and then some sand storage as well. And these sand storage are absolutely huge, I would add, but they're pretty magnificent looking buildings actually. And what I would quite like is to have them situated up against the highway just for the aesthetic of it, really, so that you can see it from that road. So I'm just going to bring this road out straight for now and bring it across and hope we've got enough room there to fit them in. That's a little bit close, but let's just use move it to drag this back just a tiny bit. And that gives us plenty of room there so we can place our first one in. I'm going to place it right up in there, actually, and we will have two of these next to each other like so and of course we've got tree energy on it again so um let's just remove those trees from there now as these fill up as well that will look pretty good up against the highway and in particular actually when you're coming back down from this slope here you'll get quite a nice view as you come down of those big sand piles which will be in those storage units right there so that is why we're placing them up against the highway there is purely aesthetic reasons now, the next thing we want to do is start bringing the road down into the ore pit and start placing the ore mines. And I am going to use the mud rural road for this. I think it worked really nicely in dodgy rocks, actually, up against this ore texture as well. I think it looks pretty good. So we are just going to bring this down next to the main building here. And we're going to bring it down in a curve because otherwise it will be pretty steep getting down onto this first level here. We'll use move it in a second just to iron those out. And I'll bring it down and round like that for now. And then let's just check that our first ore mines can sit in this area here, which they can. So I'll just place that in. And then what I am actually going to do is use move it just to adjust this round a little bit. So we're going to put it like that. And what we do get when we place this in is some quite harsh edges on the terraforming, but we can get rid of that with a lot of detailing with a lot of rocks. Uh, which, as we know, we like in Oridan. So let's have a little look at what that would look like around this area. And these cliff ones are great for around these ore mines because they do fit in pretty nicely. And I am going to cover up a bit of this asset here just to get the aesthetic feeling that we want. And it is a little bit close to the road, so we'll just shift this over so we've got a little bit more room to work with so we're not getting any of that spillover from the these rocks onto the highway there. And of course, if you don't like that, you can use Bob, by the way, to get rid of some of this vegetation, just as a little hint there. But I quite like having the vegetation on these rocks, which is why I am leaving them on for now. So let's just sort out this slope before we get too far into it. And we'll select all those nodes and just do move it to slope objects uh, to get a slightly gentler slope there. And we can see, yeah, if we just use move it and hold alt, we can snap that into place. And that gives us the smooth rundown into the ore pit there. Now, if we just have a look at placing a couple more rocks in here, so something along those lines, we just shift this over just a tiny bit more. 
And then what we can do is introduce another road. Let's turn snapping off for this. Another little road here, which we can place some of the generic or grinders in. So if we go to find it and we go to our generic or assets, we have this ore extractor here, again, which we used in the Lockside quarry. And we will just place in a couple of these like so just to essentially extend out this main extractor from the industry dlcs and we do need to be a little bit careful about surface here so i am just going to use gravel to fill this all in which i think makes sense here and we will use decals to rough this up a little bit a little bit more vegetation here and there as well when we come to do the detailing time lapse just to blend that all in and make it feel a little bit more used and slightly less polished gravel that we can see here now I do want to place in a couple more of these extractor points just to start off with. So let's go ahead and extend the road network and place those in. there we go and again we'll get rid of those harsh edges by doing a lot of rock detailing similar to this further down the line but now let's get in an ore grinding mill as well and what i would like to do with these is kind of mix them in with the other assets in the bottom of the pit because i think they look quite nice like that yeah I, th I think if we place that in like that that is okay what i will do is just bring out a little road to that warehouse so that it looks like it's connected like so and i think we will as well use bob to get rid of those conifers because i'm not sure i like how that looks we can place our own trees on our own foliage in here afterwards to get the detailing exactly how we want it but i didn't like how those looked just from that point of view and i will need to adjust that electric wire that i've just put in so let's just go ahead and remove that and replace it so if we just check this storage at the moment they're on balance which means they're essentially trying to be half full we will probably eventually move it to empty because these tend to fill up pretty fast, I find, because I tend to go a little bit overboard with the extraction. But for now, we will leave it as balanced and see how we go. So we've got three extractors and one processor, which should be all right to give us a little kickstart there. Now, if we come back on over to where I want to put a cargo rail yard. Now, I absolutely love this factory. And one thing I've never noticed before is that you can actually see right inside these windows look at the lovely little detailing on that <laughs> for a base game asset i think it's great and i've never noticed that before on this factory um but yeah i definitely i definitely want to keep this incorporated into this area because i think it's a really lovely feature and also a really nice backdrop to our residential neighborhood over here as well i think it just adds a really nice effect sitting in the background there but we want to make sure we've got enough room for our cargo train station. So I am going to shift this over just a little bit. So there we go. And then what that gives us is a little bit more space to play with here for our cargo train station. And again, what I am going to do is just move this connection slightly further up. So we've got a little bit more room to play with down here. We'll actually just remove that node. Similarly, we don't need it. They're all super close now. And let's just grab this one with move it again and we'll move it right up to here. Now what we'll need to do is just break this track for a second, just like that. And I will just break this fence off as well. So we've got a little bit more room. And then let's grab our cargo train station. So what I will do now is just grab this one unit industrial road again. And what we will do is just, I think, I think we'll just very simply curve this round to join back onto this road here. And I will just, at this junction here, bring out a road like that. So that is what is going to feed into the train hub. And it is a one-way system running all the way around so that we can try and minimise any stress on traffic around here. And we'll just upgrade this to a dirt road at the end there just to finish off that corner. So in and around this area, I want to make it quite a busy industrial area, kind of tucked into this little corner up against the intersection here. So I want the view from the intersection to be very 
industrial, you can see warehouses, factories, that type of thing. And now I have just whacked up the game speed so that we can see if we can get our all industry to level up. But in the meantime, let's come in and place some more assets around this train hub. Now, what I want to do here is definitely extend out this cargo area quite a lot. So let's come in and just grab a little bit of surface painter here and start to flesh out this area. And oh, surface painter is working out nicely for us at this particular angle. And then what we can do in find it is we can find these containers and start to fill out this area. So here we go. We've got these and using prop line tool as well is super helpful to get these all placed in really nicely here. And I'm just looking, I think we might have some slight changes in the topography here. So let's just make sure that we've got that all leveled and smoothed out. So grabbing our containers again, what we can try and do is copy this pattern that we see here. So we'll bring them out uh, like this. If we put it on defense mode, it starts where we click, which is just really helpful. Uh, for doing this type of detailing and what we'll do is we'll just continue that pattern on like so we can also put containers above so if we place these ones down let's pick them up with move it and we can just page up here and slide them across on top of these other containers as well and let's just bring them down so they're not floating on top and so that just gives us a little bit more height in our container yard as well Move those right on top. Now what we can do to make it easier on ourselves is just select these containers here with the marquee tool and we can copy them. So something along those lines will do nicely there just to extend out that cargo train station. And then what I will do is come in with a bit of fence and we're going to use the industrial fence for this because I think that just has the nicest look when we come to all the, these industry builds. So Let's just bring some of that out here. We'll just bring one unit down like so. And then we'll use linear fence fill to bring this all the way down to the end and continue it on up and round. So that's given us a nice extension to that yard. And the other thing that we definitely want to have in and around this cargo station is lots of warehouses as well to help manage our goods. Oh, and we have leveled up our ore site to level two. So we've got some new buildings. So we'll go over there in a second and start placing those. And in particular, actually, we've got this glass manufacturing plant and the industrial steel plant factory, which I definitely want to get on to placing today. But getting back to the warehouses, yeah, these open air ones will now fit in quite nicely here. So I think we will put in quite a few of these along this frontage road. And then along the back here, we do have some nice gaps uh, for a bit of detailing. We've got these kind of little fence areas here. So what I'm thinking is I might actually just use some pathway to provide almost like a back entrance into these warehouse units, just like that. And again, we'll, we'll come through and tidy that up in the detailing time lapse later on. But let's just connect up this road for now. And I will continue it on just a little bit further so that we can place more assets in here. And then we'll just bring it in to connect up to the main road like so. Now for these warehouses, I'm going to put one on metals because we have started to get that from the ore industry area. And I am also going to put some on our oil products as well so that we can start exporting those. So we'll have petroleum in here and we will also have plastics. But I am going to set these to empty. I don't want trucks coming over here and filling these up for no good reason. So it will just be a kind of holding area before it's being exported from the city there. So that's the intention of those. So coming back over to the ore pit, let's have a little look at the assets that we've unlocked. So we now have got a small ore mine underground, and this is this is a really good looking asset. I do like how this one looks, and particularly when we get rocks in all around this and kind of shelter it in, it looks particularly good. I think what we will do is have two of these in here. I'm just going to slightly angle this round at an off angle. So again, so that we've got opportunity for rocks and putting them in and to make it feel a little bit more natural. I don't think everything in an ore mine would be completely uniform in real life. Not certainly from the ones that I have looked at on Google Earth. Yeah, so I think that's a little bit better. And now we also have unlocked the glass manufacturing plant. Now with this, this is a really nice looking asset and it's got a bit of height to it. And so what I would like to do with this, actually, instead of bringing it out directly into our all area here, is bring it out over here so that it has a bit of a view from the highway. 
and we do need to extend our industry area in order for me to do that so we'll just bring that out over to the other side of the road like so um, so let's just drop it in here just for a moment but the other asset that i want to get in here which is a particularly large one is the industrial steel plant because this up against that highway up against this massive intersection i think will look great and also from the point of view of this estate as well where we've got this big chimney stack on the old factory here i think it's just going to give a really nice heavy industrial backdrop essentially to this estate and also view from this intersection here as we head on into the downtown as well having those chimney stacks in front of it i think again will look aesthetically pleasing for me but yeah if we just see what that looks like coming up from this direction i think both those chimney stacks i really like that and then as you go up and over this bridge you've got all of that industrial vibes right to your side there and equally coming up and over the bridge from this direction all those chimney stacks i really like that look and how that is developing there so let's just test out as well a few different orientations for the glass manufacturing plant here too and i'm thinking i want to squeeze it into this gap so that again you get that industrial feel right up against this highway here so just before we connect up the road there we need metals for this industrial steel plant so i definitely want to put in a warehouse here to give us some metals i think i will just put in the small one and we'll place it up against this road opposite this. I think that looks okay up against the road there. And then we can bring the road in down the side. But I would also like to incorporate a slightly larger warehouse, one of the medium ones in here, for some commercial goods as well. And we can fit in a few down there, which is fine. I think the large one is just going to be too large for this area. Yes, it is. So I think we will place a medium one down here and just see if we can get away with putting that again right underneath the highway there, which we can't really. That's just a little bit too close for comfort. So let's just move that round. We can put it in like that comfortably, actually, and that still works OK. So I think we will do that. So let's go back in and grab the one unit industrial road and bring that out down the side of this warehouse here then down into the glass manufacturing warehouse and I am actually just going to do a slightly different thing with this and bring the road right inside like so rather than bring it out the front and we can as well try and make this garage door here work by looping in a road around this area as well and if I just convert that actually to one of the pavement road connectors that looks a little bit nicer going into that gate area I think it looks a little bit more natural rather than just the road suddenly ending there we can hide it in that garage bit which I think that works there so yeah happy with how that looks so then let's set these warehouse up so i want this to be on commercial zones goods so we will do that i want this to be on metals so that we are getting them for the steel warehouse here and i'm actually going to put this one on fill so that we can keep supplying the industrial steel plant and we will actually whack this up to 150 i'm going to go and put in some more metal production into the oil and industry area in a second so we should be absolutely fine for that and I would leave commercial goods on balanced just so that we have a decent supply coming in. And of course now we do have glass being produced over here as well. So it would be good to get a glass storage in. And I don't really necessarily want them crossing the road and coming down here. Let's just get one of these warehouse yards and use that for the glass I think. And I am just going to drag this back a little bit so that we can get these fences to line up there. Because I think that's a slightly better aesthetic. And again we can come in with surface painter just to fill in these gaps. And... Uh, detail up that front yard area there so let's set that one to glass and I will put this on empty I think for now because I want it to go to wherever it needs to go before it goes to the to just stock up the warehouse and <laughs> looking at this road as well we definitely need to use some traffic manager here so let's remove all of these traffic lights and add in giveaway signs so that we can keep the traffic flowing along the main road and then of course we also want to make sure we've got our dedicated turning lanes on to help improve that traffic flow there as well so coming back to the oil site in order to level it up further we need to produce more goods but we also need some more workers so i would definitely like to get in another metal grinding plant particularly as we now have the industrial steel plant so what we will do is start to come in and put in a unit here with some more processing factories but also some of these worker barracks as well
And just finishing off that area, we have managed to level up to level three. So we've now got extra metal working plant, the rotary kiln, electronics factory, seabed mining vessel, and the medium ore mine. So lots more things to place, which is great. So all we have done here is put in some workers barracks and we have just put a couple of them in back to back, which I think just helps to give this slightly longer barracks effect, which I think looks pretty cool and all very you know, like uniform and square there. Lots of parking, obviously, for the workers. And then we have just put in an extra ore grinding mill and also one of the glass manufacturing plants as well. Now, in and around this, what I would like to do is to add some more generic industry buildings and just the regular base game or industry buildings, just to flesh out this area a little bit. Now, there's some of them that I think can go qu together quite well with some of these buildings, particularly where we've got these chimney stacks with the red and white stripes. It all matches up to this glass plant here as well. So with this building, what I would like to do actually is just spin it around and kind of merge it into the back of this glass plant here. And then in next to that, I would like to add one of these as well. I think these just help to bulk out that kind of industrial look around this area. So if we place this one in right up against the back of this building here, I'm not too keen on the pink on these. So I am just going to reset them just to see if we can get some other colours in. And yeah, that white goes a little bit better with the glass plant there. There we go. We've essentially got an extension onto the back of this one here. And we've got this little yard here, which we can come in and do some detailing on the detailing time lapse. So we'll definitely do some surface painter, lots of fencing and lots of props in here just to flesh that out. Exactly like our old generic woodpeckers brewery industry area that we did right back in episode two. Now for this section, I'm just going to bring in another small piece of road here that we can then place some more assets around. So looking at the base game or assets, some of them are okay and others of them are just not so pretty, honestly. So I think we'll be pretty selective about what we include in here. So we do have this one and we can use Bob with this to remove that industrial fence so that we can essentially make it a slightly larger complex than what it is. So it's not all fenced in exactly like that. We just move it up and I think we'll position it in the corner like that just for the moment. And then we also have this asset here that I would quite like to put in with the bigger chimney stacks again. And if we place it like this, what I want to do is kind of extend it out with another one of these buildings. So it's the same type of building, but it's just obviously by itself as opposed to a join to those chimney stacks. So we can merge it in, um, but then we'll need to be a little bit more selective about where these other assets go to fit this all in appropriately. And then what I'm hoping that we can do with this whole area is put these assets together in a way that we can make it look like one complex alongside the all grinding mill here. So we can fence in the whole area, add in props and yeah, make it look like one asset, one, one compound area. And so there we go. So I think that fits in quite well. So we've got a couple of these buildings adjoined to this one with the chimney stacks there and then sitting this one in here. And I've actually upgraded this to a little car park. So again, doing the similar thing to what we did over in Woodpecker's Brewery. But yeah, trying to make that look like one particular area and also add the parking in for convenience. Now we have also unlocked the rotary kiln plant. And what I would like to do with that is, it, I mean, it's super tall and it is quite a feature building. But what I'd like to do is actually put in two because they do produce the most metals for us. So it's a particularly useful building for that. Uh, but what I would like to do is put these in back to back so that we get this central area like that. And then, you, as you can see from the road here, trying to make it look like one building <laughs> and it's all very symmetrical. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I quite like that. And the height of it as well behind where we have all this rocks and this sand storage, I think will look good from a kind of a, a, an industrial skyline point of view. So now just getting the road network into here in order to provide access for that, we'll grab the one unit industrial road again, and let's draw it up the side here and around this building. So we'll come all the way out down the side and round to provide access down here. Now ordinarily I would get rid of these car parking spaces, but I actually quite like it like that. I think it does work. So we will leave them in this case. Now just continuing on our row of storage here too, because we have now also unlocked the coal storage. So I'd like to put in one of those 
just to add a bit of variation to this row of storage here. And it is slightly different, but we can, again, just make sure that we're merging those fences so we don't have fence on fence action looking slightly odd there. I think that will do fine. And now we are having worker problems here as well. So I am just very quickly going to go and put in some more housing just to extend out this housing estate into this area. Oh, and we have just leveled up our all industry area to level four. So we have got some new buildings. So the maintenance building in particular, another factory, mine, fiberglass plant and ore storage. So we'll come in and put those in in a second. Well, there we go. So I have just extended this district out into this corner. Exactly the same vibes with the ore fence, the alleyways going back behind the houses. Uh, same type of assets, that sort of thing down into this corner here. And I also have added in this little road connection here so that people can more easily get from this district down to the ore site if they need to for work. We will add public transport in as well at a later time. So now coming back to the site and with all of the upgrades that we have just unlocked as well. So we do now have the medium ore mine. Uh, we also have the large underground ore mine as well, which I would like to put in one of these somewhere. And I think what I will do is actually replace this medium one here with a large one. And then we can use move it just to adjust where this sits uh, into a slightly nicer position. And what I'm going to do here as well is use network multi-tool to unlock this piece of ore fence here so that I can get it into the position that I want. So if we unlock, unlock that, then we can actually delete that from the asset so that we don't have it intruding onto this one. And then we can start to put it in at some slightly more interesting angles. And we'll come in with rocks all around that to cover up that really horrendous, janky terrain there. And then the other extractor we have unlocked is the medium ore mine. Now, ideally, what I want to do is put a large ore mine into the bottom of this pit here. But that's when we hit level five. And I don't think we'll do that today just because of purely needing some more residents in to get our workers up. So I think what I will do for now is potentially put in a couple of these. I'm just going to drop them in and then we can uh, use move it to get them into position. So yeah, that should do it there. And in terms of leveling up, yeah, we're not going to get there today, I don't think. I mean, this is creeping up, but 650 is quite a lot. We've got the capacity for it, but we'll see. We'll see. And then I would also like to get in the ore maintenance building. So let's just put that down and have a little look at where it could go. See, ideally, I quite like to fit it into this space, but it doesn't really go with all of the fencing there. And we do have a few props. So what we can do to make that work is use our old favourite multi-network tool. And let's go to unlock segment and we will get rid of this fence that we have down the sides and at the front there so it's not crossing over the road so now that we've unlocked it we can just go ahead and delete those bits of fence out and then what we'll use is use bob to move these recycling containers over so what we can do here is go to the individual props go to the large recycling containers and then we can just offset them so we'll want to use this offset and let's just roll that all the way back and we'll move that one out here and then we'll take and of course, I didn't press press tick. So uh, yeah, make sure you do that, folks. <laughs> I think we'll bring that out to the side and roll that up as far as we can go. Let's press tick there. And then I think, yeah, we'll move this one up next to it just like that. And then I think the other one, actually, let's just get rid of it because I don't think we're going to move it into a place that will make sense. So we want to keep these large doors clear because they look like they should be taking deliveries or something of that sort. So yeah, I think we'll fit it in just like that. And so now it's not spilling out onto the road anymore, although we do have a trash can there, actually, I've just seen. So let's go ahead and move that. And that leaves us with just the building there. So I think that will uh, that will be OK for the maintenance building. And then the final processing building that we've unlocked is this fiberglass plant as well. So I think what we'll do here is bring one in down here. And I definitely want two of these again because they're the largest... They're the largest glass manufacturing processing buildings. Let's just get rid of those trees because we've got tree anarchy back on. So I think what I'll do with this is just move this up so it's slightly further off the road. So we've got a little bit more room to play with there. And then with this one, we can spin this round. And I think we'll bring it down the side just like that. Because then, yeah, if we have a little view check from the road, 
we've got these slightly lower industrial buildings it looks very heavily built up we'll definitely do detailing around this roundabout to blend that in a little bit but i think overall that looks okay so i have just added in a few more warehouses along here just to continue that pattern and for now until we put in more different industries zones i will just put these as commercial zoned goods so that we can get some product in there and make it look nice now i think all that leaves is a detail and time lapse so i will come in and put some probably some more generic industry maybe a police station a kind of security gate in here a load of surface painter a few fences and props and that sort of thing all around this area filling in some of these unusual spaces with a nice bit of detailing and then of course all of our rocks and additional or extraction points props or oh, lots of little corners to fill around our big industry or area here so lots of detailing to be done there so i'll jump into a time lapse and be right back
And so there we have it. So I have come in and done intersection marking tool around these roundabouts and on all of these intersections here. So that's all tidied up. I haven't done too much detailing around this because we'll wait and see what infrastructure we want to put around it. But I have just put a few rocks and trees and that sort of thing. In the all area, I've put a lot of fencing, a lot of these ruined decals on the concrete, a few different props pop, popped around here and there. So a few little areas like this of storage and, and this little one here. Got a little security gate on the entrance there and just some containers and storage and that type of thing in there. Otherwise, just lots of surface painter and fencing. And then coming onto the ore pit itself, just an absolute ton of <laughs> rocks, as you can see. And yeah, a couple of little areas like this with a few different offices, a couple of car props, that sort of thing. Lots of the ruined decals as well to rough it up a little bit, uh, make it look a little bit more natural. But all in all, I think that has come together quite well and it does fit the style that we have used over in Dodgy Rocks and uh, the Lockside Quarry over the other side. So a very similar style, that kind of Oridan or mine look, shall we say. And I have actually leveled this up to level five, but do you know what? I decided I actually really like these two cranes here too much to move them. So I have just left these and decided not to go with the large ore mine in this area. It may be that we put in some more mines into Oridan because, I mean, I'm loving the rock detailing. So yeah, we could put in another mine potentially with the large ore mine in it. But I think for this area, that works pretty well. Uh, coming on over to the cargo area, again, not too much detailing, just a lot of surface painter, lots of the ruined decals. I have extended the cargo train station out over this side. So just more of those cargo props, uh, one of these frames. Not sure what the technical term is for that. Lots of the industrial fencing, a couple of offices actually there just to make it look like an administration building potentially for the cargo station. One little storage area here just full of props in there with some of the containers and the such like. And then just lots of fencing, surface painter. I did put in a couple of workshop uh, warehouses there, Vanya's warehouses, because I just thought they suited that bit a little bit better and fitted really nicely into that corner next to the big steel works here. And I did also add in a police station, one small cargo yard over here as well as a bit of a kind of security entrance. But apart from that, that was it. So now just before we go, I would actually like to give this a name and it is a name after one of my patrons. So thank you so much for your support. And you did suggest this actually, but what we are going to call this is Shot Glass Company. Um, and that is for David Schott. Thank you so much for being a patron of mine. I really appreciate all of your support tremendously. And I hope you uh, enjoy the Shot Glass Company, which I am informed is an actual real glass company with a distillery or something nearby. So we've got Woodpackers Brewery not too far away. So I hope you like it. I hope you like it. But do please let me know in the comments any name suggestions for our train cargo area with the steelworks here. And I will next episode also name our two districts here. So if there are any more suggestions than that, get them in and I will give them a name on the next episode. But that is going to be it for today. So thank you so much for tuning in. If you have enjoyed it, a like is really, really appreciated. And let me know what you think in the comments along with those name suggestions as well. Otherwise, I will catch you next time. Bye bye.